Hello out there. In this video example, let's calculate the CPI and then the rate of inflation from the CPI uh, without Excel, just uh, with the paper. Um, okay, so what we want to do is we want to recognize we've got this community here. They make three products, pizza, notebooks, tonic water. Uh, in terms of bottles, I've got prices and output, prices and output from 1980 to 2004. I want to calculate the CPI and then I want to calculate the uh, right down here, the inflation deflation rate between 2004 and um, 1980. Now, one thing you can do is just eyeball. I can see the prices were one dollar, four dollars, and 150. And then looking ahead in the future, 275, seven, and 250. So we know there's going to be inflation, not deflation. So your numbers are going to be positive. Uh, we also have higher output, but in this case, when you use the CPI, you don't you don't really need to measure. Um, the number of goods. So looking at this, um, uh, it tells us, assume the base year uh, is 1980, the basket purchased by the representative consumer is one pizza and one bottle of tonic water. So actually the notebook price is going to be irrelevant here. Um, and we're really just looking at one product here. So CPI formula is the, uh, the current year basket okay so what's the what's the basket and then divided by the base year basket okay and then I want to multiply that so to divide that there okay get a better straighter okay and I'm going to multiply all of that by hundred okay so there's a trick here uh, recognizing it here so um, well actually we'll just derive the trick okay so the CPI for 1980 okay is going to be the price of one pizza and one tonic water so that basket would be two dollars and fifty cents Okay. The base year is 1980, so the price of that basket is 250 in the base year times 100. So it's this is one. One times 100 is 100. So the trick that you have here is that is recognizing that in the base year, the CPI will always be 100. Okay. So then flash forward, CPI in 2004. Uh, again, we know the base year basket was 250. Okay. And then uh, what we want to know here is $2.75 plus 250 is $5.25 times a hundred okay so we'll do that on a calculator here I guess it looks like I already did it uh, but just to show you 5.25 divided by 250 that's 2.1 times a hundred so do that in your head but uh, 210 okay so that's uh, now we're just going to use our formula so the percent change formula. This is what the inflation deflation rate is. So now we've we figured out CPI 1980, CPI 2004. The percent change formula is new minus old over old times 100. And actually, I mean, I'm going to put it into the formula, but you don't really need to, to you know, it's, it's going to be 110 um, because as you go away from 100, that's what you get. Okay, um, so just to show you, it's 210 minus 100 over 100 times 100. So that's, that's going to be 110 over 100, and then times 100 is 110% increase, just using the CPI. Okay. 
Now there's an alt, so that answers the question. Now there's an alternative way of doing this where we take, um, we figure out the GDP deflator. This question didn't ask about it, but in case you do, uh, in case you are asked, GDP deflator is the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP. Okay. And the real GDP in this in this context, actually I can just type that out here. So the the nominal GDP is going to be current year. Actually I'll put current period because it may not always be year. Um, prices times current year quantities. Okay, in this kind of little model equation here. And then real GDP is the we're going to use the base year or base period prices. So we'll hold the prices constant times current year quantities. Okay. So if you run into a problem like that asking you to use the GDP deflator, what you're going to do um, for 2004 is use these quantities and these prices. That'll get you your real GDP and then compare that to just plug in your I guess, GDP deflator technically is multiplied by 100. Um, we're then going to multiply uh, or we're going to plug in so we'll use the current year prices so it'd be 3 times 275, 10 times 7 uh, four times 250, th that's going to give you your nominal GDP. And then using these quantities and these prices, that gives you your real GDP. So that, that is the method for doing that.